Welcome to Ministry in Motion, a program where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. Whether you're a full-time pastor or a volunteer in your local church, Ministry in Motion is a place where you can learn and grow. And that's what we're talking about today as we talk about continuing education for ministry. Our guest, Anthony Kent. Anthony, you're the host for Ministry in Motion. Here you are now as a guest because we're talking about a topic that is very close to your heart, continuing education for ministry. Why is that so important for you? Thanks very much, Derek. Continuing education, it's important because it's, it's not just intellectual knowledge. It's the holistic person. Um, it's not just for pastors. It's for elders, volunteer leaders in a local church. Yes, it does involve the intellectual growth of a person, but it also involves the spiritual growth, growth their the, the growth socially. It, it's multidimensional to make us a, a more holistic, a better equipped person for ministry. Now, I'm going to talk about definition in a minute, but mm -hmm. the very fact that you host a program called Ministry in Motion for pastors and lay leaders shows your commitment to continuing education and you have some responsibilities as an associate secretary in the General Conference Ministerial Association. Um, talk to me about that uh, continuing education responsibility that you have. Sure. One of my responsibilities, as you mentioned, is developing continuing education programs for pastors, elders and so forth. This is why we do Ministry in Motion. But I also have a, a special appreciation for the needs of interns. Um, young that, ministers. That's people just getting started? Exactly. Um, in their formative years of ministry because it can be a very significant make or break period. You know, in an aeroplane, the most dangerous time is takeoff. And it's as well as the destination, right. it's, it's a very important part of travel. So, mm. And it's the same in ministry. So I have a desire to, to, to help grow pastors and, and people in ministry because it is so satisfying and so rewarding. So give me a definition. Uh, people hear about it. For example, my wife is a nurse practitioner and they're required to have these continuing education units. Um, give me a definition of that when we're talking about ministry. Okay, it's, it's growth for the purpose of ministry. It includes education, it includes spiritual growth, it also includes professional growth, mental growth, and it's not so much a haphazard thing of just grabbing things in the, the buffet of life, but having it planned and working through. So this is where I need to grow, recognizing where I need to grow, and this is how I can grow. So it needs to be planned, it needs to be supported, it needs to be guided in some ways. In many ways, we need to be the dean of our own growth mm. because we need to understand the destination and the type of person that we would like to be. Of course, Jesus is the model and Jesus grew his disciples. He wasn't happy with his disciples just staying in the, the low land of, of ignorance. He wanted to bring out the very best for his disciples. Mm. He modeled that and delivered that. And so when we model our lives on Jesus, there's this great opportunity for growth. But how do we do that? How right. do we grow like that? Now, you mentioned earlier this idea of need, yes. awareness of a need. And I want to ask you, because you've had broad experience in ministry and you've also not only been committed to helping people, but you've been involved in continuing education for your own mm. life and ministry. When did you come to the place where you realized, I need to keep learning, I need to keep growing? Yeah, it really struck me during my formative years when I was an intern working under the supervision of a senior pastor. And Pastor Lynn Utley, he was a, a fantastic mentor, trainer, coach, supervisor. And he instilled and made me aware of the importance of growing. And in my own personal experience, I can remember I wanted each Bible study to be better than the last, mm. you know, and it's just just seeing the benefits of doing ministry well, not for my own pleasure or anything like that, but just for the benefit of others. Um, 
I guess I'm not too proud to say some sermons are better than others that I've preached. Sure. And, you, you know, you, you walk out and it's not only is it humiliating, but it's a wasted opportunity mm. not to preach your best, you, you know, not, not to deliver the best that it can be and become the best that we can be as preachers, for example. So whether it's preaching, visitation, personal ministry, Bible study, teaching, we can all do these better so that we're not just plateauing. It's so easy just to take it easy, rely on the filing cabinet rather than growth. Right. So for me, it happened during my internship and particularly after internship in the first churches that I pastored. I wanted to do it well for their benefit, for God's honor and glory. So you kind of become aware of the fact, I guess some professions require continuing education. That's right. You know, I have yeah. a son who's a surgeon. I mean, you can't just finish medical school, residency, take your boards and then not learn anymore. Yeah. Actually, in the Adventist church for pastors, there is a requirement that we do continuing education. It's a minimal requirement, but it's still there. And that is two units of continuing education per year, which equates to 20 hours out of a whole year, which is not a high expectation, but it's a reminder that we should be growing. I'd like to see that as the very minimal rather than the goal. And I'm thinking of lay leaders in the local church. Uh, as I go, for example, I do preaching workshops for elders. They are hungry. That's the expression. They're wanting to learn. They're wanting that excellence that you're talking about. So we'll talk after the break. Uh, how, how do they go about finding resources and uh, maybe not being overwhelmed by all the things that they could learn? Because uh, life is a school, isn't it? Absolutely. And we've got much to learn. Well, this is an important topic. Perhaps you're feeling like you're on a plateau. I know when I finished seminary, when I was so busy, I stopped reading. I was just trying to do things. But that can get old after a while. So if you're saying, I need to learn, I want to continue to grow, we'll have some practical insights for you about continuing education for ministry right after the break. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is continuing education for ministry. That's not just for pastors, by the way, but lay leaders in your local church continuing to grow. And our guest is Anthony Kent. Anthony, you're no stranger to this group. You're the host of Ministry in Motion, but you've got this real passion for continuing education. That's why you are the host of this program. Let's talk about um, why continued growth is important as we think about the fact that the world's changing all around us. That's exactly right, Derek. You know, there are many things that have been um, very relevant and appropriate for the time, but the time moves on. Uh, for example, mode of transport, you know, horse, steam engine, and that type of thing. There were companies that just used to manufacture steam engines and they didn't move across to the, the electric and that type of thing went completely out of business. And the same with film, for example, some well-known examples there. So, and it's the same that Christianity and we as ministers, whether we're volunteers or as pastors, stay contemporary and present in ways that are relevant and appropriate for our times. I'm thinking of you as a teacher, for example, a Bible teacher. In the past, you might be able to say, we're in this big hall downtown, mm -hmm. but now you've got podcasting, You've That's got right. the, the Ministry of Motion television program. So the, the message, uh, the Bible message remains solid and constant, but the delivery can change it. Absolutely. The needs of people change. Ab too. Absolutely. You know, I can remember taking seminars where I was using 10 slide projectors on one screen. And uh, they were the days. That was high tech. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the latest, greatest thing. And it was a lot of work setting up those projectors, getting them computer sequ in sequence and that type of thing. And the setup time was formidable. But now it's a completely different world. Um, we don't need the big venues. We, we don't need all those projectors. What, what took 10 projectors, you can do better with one single data projector now. And you can do it even online without having to draw people together at a specific time and place. 
So times are changing. That necessitates learning. Uh, let's 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 move on to actually making the plan. Mm -hmm. How do I determine what? things I need to learn in, in my growth plan? Okay, first of all, we need to assess our own needs. Where, where do we feel comfortable? Are we comfortable in doing certain things? Are we feeling more comfortable than others? Are we feeling competent? You know, just this morning, a person came and, and spoke to me, an elder in their local church, and they just said, I feel the need for training. This person went to two seminars just on the, the most recent weekend and said, I really enjoyed that. But what it reminded me of was that I need to learn more. And, and this person said, you know, in my local church, the other elders, I'm sensing their need for this as well. What can we do? So being aware of the need and rather than just shunning it, putting it out of our mind, but doing something about it. And if we're not aware of our needs, perhaps have a confidential chat to somebody, somebody close that we can trust, spouse, uh, another, you know... Ministry colleague. Or... E exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and just say, have you detected something that, you know, I, I really need to build on? Now, I'm going to ask you a question because my thoughts changed about continuing education with, with this one sentence. A person said to me, some people focus on their weaknesses, mm -hmm. like to try to be strong and everything, yeah. but actually you should focus on your strengths. Is that true and not true at the same time? It, it's both. Okay. I, I think it depends on the context. You know, if you're in a situation in ministry where you are specialising, let's say you're, you're into family ministry, well, of course, build up, you, you know, family ministry and, and your expertise in that area. Don't shun that. But for the most majority of people who are into ministry, they're general practitioners. And, and we need to, to cover all of the bases and cover it competently and effectively. But if I have a special gift, you know, I'm passionate about preaching, right? For sure. So if I maybe I don't feel a real passion for counseling, I could learn enough to refer Ex intelligently. Exactly. In other words, I don't have to take graduate training in counseling mm. if my gifts lie in another area or if I've got a real passion for health ministry as opposed to finance. That's but right. But you're saying certain basic competencies are essential. Absolutely, yeah. Because one, one thing that we, we need to keep in mind, that continuing education is not just about a delivery of skills and doing things, it's about the person and it's about being a holistic person. Mm. Um, am, am I growing spiritually in a, in a balanced way? Now, some people learn better in one way than another. You talked about this elder who said the seminar. Mm. Other people, they say, just give me a book. Let me read it. Yeah. Other people say, oh, I'd fall asleep in both of those. Give me an interactive small group. How do I decide which learning style is, is best for me? Well, again... Look at where you've, you've done well. There are people who seem to naturally acquire information well through reading. Build up your library. Encourage the church to have a church library. Go and visit a, a, a library in your area. Go online. There's plenty of articles and materials. Come to the Ministry in, in Motion website. Right. And uh, we, we have written resources there that pe people can download. So there, there is that style of learning. But others learn best in a conversation. Now, I would suggest even if you can, meet with a colleague, a friend, somebody who has a skill that you want to develop and grow and have a conversation with them. Go out for lunch, for example, and rather than talking about just sport or things that, you know, are just conversation pieces, Talk about ministry. Pick their brains. It's Explore very intentional with them. conversation. E exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, these one on one conversations, they can be the most powerfully equipping opportunities for growth and education as well. I think we were attending a conference once in London and Haddon Robinson said, would you like to have lunch with Calvin Miller or someone? Uh, I think I learned more over lunch than I did in the morning presentations. Exactly. So you're saying uh, have a, um, an alert uh, what's the word? Be, being aware of the opportunities for learning? And it's, it's more than just haphazard opportunities. It needs to be intentional. 
Look, looking at and aiming for opportunities, make arrangements, put it in the, the, the calendar. We'll talk about that after the break because we do want to be intentional. You say, okay, I want to do this. How do I go about mapping out my continuing education plan? By the way, I want to tell you, you will grow whether you're a pastor or a volunteer leader in your church, if you're intentional and you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, you will grow in your ministry. We'll talk more about continuing education for ministry right after the break. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is continuing education for ministry. That's not just for pastors, by the way. If you're a lay leader in your church, you're going to see the need to continue to grow. And our guest is Anthony Kent. Anthony, it's good to be together. You're the host of Ministry in Motion, so you have this deep commitment to provide resources for pastors and lay leaders to help them to continue to grow. Uh, let's talk more about uh, learning styles being the best, and then how do I kind of map out, uh, can I say a balanced approach? The yes. continuing education? Yeah. When, one thing we need to keep in mind, Derek, is that continuing education, the purpose of it is for ministry. It's equipping for ministry. It's not just for the uh, acquirement of satisfying knowledge or something along those lines. It is, the purpose is delivery of ministry because there, there can be a danger of becoming, for example, a seminar junkie where anything that's on offer, somebody could attend, even though it's not really relevant or needed in their, in their field. So um, mm. Could also be a way maybe of avoiding doing ministry. Exactly. Like your heart's not really in it, so you just take any other opportunities you can? Exactly. So continue education, it's for delivery of ministry and making that delivery better, more effective. For one of our programs on Ministry of Motion, we, we talked to a pastor of pastors, mm -hmm. what we call a ministerial secretary. Um, is there any value in asking, like someone that's overseeing you, um, what, what do you see are areas that I've got gifts and passions and what are some learning opportunities? In other words, can I, can I find mentors who can help me design this continuing education plan? Absolutely. I think in the Adventist context, a ministerial secretary is an ideal person to go to, uh, particularly if you're a local conference. I think it's also to have good to, to talk to the local church um, because it's amazing the resources that are available in the local church. Um, I know of a pastor who really needed to, to learn some basics in music and to, to sing because the pastor was called upon to lead the congregation in singing. And right there in the congregation was this outstanding music teacher that was able to help that particular pastor. So that's using the resources of the local congregation and also our spouse. Um, they need to be on board with this as well, understanding our needs and being aware that we need to, to grow in those areas of needs. Yeah. So a person's watching and they say, OK, um, what would be a balanced approach? Uh, you talked about two units or 20 hours. Um, you don't want to do too much that you're avoiding ministry, but you do want to grow so that you can be more effective in ministry. Mm. Uh, where should I start? I, I would look at particularly the areas of your ministry that need the improvement. And it's more when that improvement improvement is a, is a reality. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're saying to me, uh, maybe I hadn't planned to do some continuing ed until the summer, but a, a tremendous workshop comes up on, let's say, administration skills. Yeah. And I know that's something I need. You'd actually delegate responsibility, get the support of your local board at the church and conference and say, this is something I need. It's available here. Yeah. That intentional? Exactly. Um, and um, talk to the conference. They, they, they may be delighted to cover some of the expenses. The local church may as well. Um, but it'd be good to also do a, a broader survey of the resources that are available. 
okay, there might be a seminar that comes through. However, there might be a, a better opportunity at another time, at another place. Like ministryinmotion.tv website, right? Exactly. Where you've exactly. got more than 100 training programs, absolutely free, yep. and you can watch them anytime, day or night, 24-7. Exactly. So there's a yeah. great um, accessibility. Yeah. And, you know, some people also learn better in a group. So if this is not only a need of the pastor, it could well be a need of the local congregation. Mm. So making the opportunity, the, the growth opportunity, not only available to the pastor of the church, but also to those who are doing ministry in the local church as well. So that it can be a group dynamic and then you can keep the, the team on board as well. So I'm going to give you two objections, okay? Someone sure. says, great idea, Anthony, but I don't have time. Right. Well, we always make time for, for what's important to us. You know, if, if ministry is significant to us, then we'll find the time. And perhaps, really, this, this might be a bit tough, but if somebody hasn't got time to grow, then perhaps they're not the right person in that ministry position. And perhaps if I were to ask mentors or leaders who are helping me in ministry, they'd say, take the time. Yeah. Because this is important for you. Exactly. Another objection. Yeah. I, I can't afford it. Uh, it's going to cost money to go to that workshop or to buy these books that would be helpful. I, I just can't afford that. Sure. Finances, again, it's much like time. What, what we really value, we'll find the, the, the resources to be able to achieve. So we, we may need, instead of aiming for the Rolls Royce, we, we may need to look at a, a more inexpensive way of acquiring those skills and that growth. I've need to, needed to do some more research. I can remember one particular program I wanted to, to participate in was astronomically expensive. Right. And it was just an impossibility. And I didn't feel comfortable in asking people to, to support me in that way. And I found the re amazing blessing is, and I think it was miraculous, something that was better, that was far less expensive. And God will lead, God will open those opportunities for us. So if the commitment is there to continue to grow, I won't give up mm -hmm. because I don't have the money to fly to Paris and, and spend a huge amount. Uh, I might be able to find it online, free exactly. delivery. So, so now I, instead of saying, do I grow or not, mm. I'm looking for the, the, what, the, the workable avenue exactly. that will enable that to happen. Yeah. And you know, another important step in all of this, Derek, and it, it, it's evaluating. What, what you've learned, has it been helpful? Has it been useful? Has it... Made div a difference? Yeah, exactly. And what was the cost of that? And consult with other colleagues, talk with them, share what you've been doing. Um, a, a friend close colleague of mine in, in Australia. Wow, he has some fantastic information on Corinthians. Whenever I want to know something about Corinthians and I've exhausted the commentaries. Go to him. Exactly. It you, sounds you know. like life is a school. I was told that when I was a little boy. Maybe, maybe you, you heard that uh, life is a school and if you're not growing, you're dying. Well, it's true in ministry. Whether you're a pastor, a lay leader in your congregation, there are wonderful opportunities some very inexpensive, like ministryemotion.tv website. You can go there absolutely free. There's more than 100 training programs. You can put them on your phone, listen to the podcast. Keep growing, not to make a name for yourself, but to honor the name of Jesus. Thanks for joining us for Ministry in Motion. Keep growing in your ministry.